is the Glass Cannon Network. It's Friday night, and according to my watch, it's time for chaos. Tonight is a, a very special episode. Uh, it's it's episode eleven, um, and and my sort of soft goal in my brain uh, before we started uh, season one of Time for Chaos is that this would be a, a twenty episode season. Now, uh, maybe it'll be twenty two, maybe it'll be eighteen, but the goal was twenty in my head, um, which would mean that we are uh, we are we're about to approach the second half of of uh, the first season, which is exciting. We'll see if it works out. I have no idea. I really have no idea what's happening every time I sit down to play this game, which is exciting and also terrifying. Uh, so that's, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the good news, bad news. It's just news is what it is. Um, but I do have bad news is uh, after tonight, uh, we're taking two weeks off before the next episode uh, because next week is um, Gen Con and uh, we're toning down uh, the content that we're putting out um, remotely because we're going to be putting out so much content at the con so we're taking uh, almost all next week off uh, for most of our shows uh, and then the following week <laughs> just there's been some uh, scheduling issues and whatnot so we need to take another week otherwise we're going to drive ourselves crazy um, it's already uh, an untenable schedule so we've got to take two weeks off but then we're coming back strong so that puts a lot of pressure on to tonight's app um, Kate how are you going to make tonight's app special um, I was wondering if maybe there was another DMV we could go to in the city, like maybe like North Manhattan or maybe in the Bronx. <laughs> the Brooklyn DMV? Yeah. The, yeah, the, this the should borough. be an all DMV app. That was nice uh, because it just killed time and didn't actually get into any of my prep. Uh, <laughs> No, is there uh, a department of boating vehicles? <laughs> <laughs> Maritime DMV? How are you guys doing tonight? Uh, this is uh, the, the the chatter pre-show is that you're nervous about going to the going to the to jail. I, is that I what's going like... to happen? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're under arrest for uh, murder. Murder. Um, yeah, what can go wrong? It's gonna be fine. <laughs> What we can, can go totally wrong? totally fix this. I'm sure you can fast talk your way out of this one. Or not. I think uh, it's been too many episodes and we're still with the original cast. We've got to fix that tonight. I think there really. aren't enough role-playing games that take place entirely in prisons. So yeah. I would like to play this out for several episodes. If possible. Pause the, yeah. the RPG. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, last episode, we, we broke into, into things. This one is we break out. Maybe. Good. Possibly. We this dealt with uncanny and eldritch entities from... From beyond our veil of existence. So who's to say we can't find our way through the American justice system? Something happens in Call of Cthulhu where it doesn't take long before investigators are like, we should break into that government building. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't like the information we got. Let's uh, steal a car and drive there and break in. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the credit goes to you, Troy, because you played a guy who was so obnoxious <laughs> that I think we felt we needed to Fuck that guy over. Right. Yeah. I wanted, it was less about getting the information, more about vandalizing his desk. <laughs> What's well, a urination for, yes, for exactly. a TTRPG? Yes. Yeah, we're more trying so to than out usual. If, if there's DNA testing in 1924. And, and no, right? No DNA Where did Luminol yet. come into play? Let's say yes. Let's say Tesla <laughs> himself shows up. Possibly already did. Uh, and comes and does it. Do you guys have any, uh, I want to give you a bachelor party update. Uh, I don't know where we're going yet. We were on pins and needles. Yes, us. I God. know. I, I didn't want to leave you hanging. I didn't want to talk about it before we went live because I'm sure uh, all of America is wondering as well. Uh, it looks like it's been narrowed down to two cities, uh, Vegas mm -hmm. and Montreal. And, okay. Uh, I okay. said that I could do both weekends uh, in September, so we'll see. I really don't know what's going to happen. Now I'm kind of pulling, pulling for Vegas. If we're going to do it, let's just do it. Yeah, man. Um, so stay tuned. Keep us posted. Yeah, please. Yeah. Figure out uh, what tattoo you want on your face. You know, I do need a good face tat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get someone else's face tattooed on my Oh, there you go. Come yeah. on. So you uh, all already look like one of those 80s 
photos where you're like looking to the side and looking straight at the same time. Yes. Oh, yeah, like, like those star search things where it's like mm -hmm. a man and then a woman. Those are fun. Remember star search, Kate? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right uh what you know there was a topic last week that we didn't hit on hobbies i wanted to, i wanted to, i really wanted to dig into this because i think it, maybe it's just an excuse for me to talk about what i have going on uh behind closed doors but do you guys have hobbies that uh really only you share and maybe you wish other people shared it or it's something that like maybe only a couple of you and your friends do um and you're like man i really wish other people were into this so that i could share this uh this love that i have with someone else that would require me to have free time, Troy. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's hobbies that, no, I guess all hobbies do take time. Yeah. There must They're be hard something. Hard to prioritize. Rob, I know you were a big, uh, you played the, the Star Wars miniature game, right? I love that game, X-Wing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to Joe about it on uh, Cannon Fodder. But you got um, buddies that play it? No, that's the problem. So, yeah, this is full on. Yeah, I try, like, all my buddies in Denver here are too cool um, for the most part. Otherwise, it's just a scheduling nightmare. And I and the other ones that would be willing haven't really played it. So then I have to like teach them. Um, but part of buying hundreds upon hundreds of dollars worth of plastic Star Wars ships is to be like, hey, man, I got everything you need. Like you come here, <laughs> I, you tell me what you want to be and I'm going to build this list for you and then put out all the <laughs> ships that I never actually touch with my hands. So yeah, I just need. Yeah, I just I, there's a there's a game shop here that I went to uh of, for a few weeks uh but it's every it's every wednesday that conflicts with my ultimate frisbee league that i'm also in uh so uh that's uh, been an issue what a what a I used weird to play city. ultimate frisbee league yeah it's full there's a lot I of i competed here you oh, go really? here's your yeah. friend you guys should have set up a game yeah i know we could play it. I'm sure that's a game you can play on Zoom. Try bringing people together. Here, <laughs> here we do. are. We this is what this is for. Yeah, I'm not good. I don't want to get, you know, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. It's just an excuse to run around like an idiot. Um, yeah. And I'm, myself and my buddy are maybe the oldest uh, people on the team by at least a decade. So that's cool. Uh, just getting <laughs> lapped um, by people who are a little bit more intense than you would think on an Ultimate Frisbee field in Colorado. They get pretty intense. Yeah. A lot of diving, a lot of yeah. diving I, catches. There's also uh, a prevailing theory that people who get super into ultimate frisbee just weren't good enough for like other sports. So they bring <laughs> they bring that intensity <laughs> to. You know, I'm down for the rebuttal, Nora. I just Nora's feel like some of these starting quarterback for Florida State. <laughs> yeah, I just feel like some of these guys, some of these guys are just sort of like so aggro about frisbee, and I get being competitive and stuff like that. But it's like at the end of the day. You kind of want to be like, have you seen what you look like when you play this game? Like, I had a completely different experience from you. <laughs> really? Yeah. What, like they were all cool? Well, like I, I lived in Korea for four years. And so a bunch of us had like there was there was League Ultimate Frisbee. Oh, no, we lost Troy. Troy. That's right. I'm still here. I just. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll keep talking. Just keep this. talking. Don't all worry right. about my shitty so camera. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I lived in South Korea for four years and a bunch of the uh, expat community, um, along with Korea, we had we had an ultimate Frisbee league. We actually played a semi-international competition. Um, and we got to play like in the stadiums that they played World Cup in, which is awesome. Whoa. But we so we played like Taiwan and China and Japan, Guam. That's amazing. Uh, I loved the Guam's teams because they had really fun names. They had Guami Bears and the Guambats. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Um, but every everything was like really chill because See, it was that, just maybe an that's excuse to drink beer and that that could be because there's a level of um uh, maybe it's like a self-esteem thing or like they're they, you could look at yourself in the mirror and be like, I'm playing an international game today in a World Cup stadium. And like you've got nothing to prove because you've made it. Whereas no, we're a you're, bunch playing of a, you're playing <laughs> in a public park. I, and, and he, you know, you could tell the chances that someone was going to be an asshole. They greatly increase if they're wearing a T-shirt that says like a league name on it or something like that. You know what I mean? As opposed to like a fucking Pokemon shirt. We were uh, Kim Jong Ilin, man. We had damn, <laughs> we, we that's had bold. Kim Jong was like a boombox. Just getting the line. <laughs> yeah, the puns. If you got somebody with a pun on their shirt, 
you are immediately trustworthy. <laughs> headbands, not as trustworthy. No. But there's a lot of uh, red, white, and blue headbands. I'm wearing at least four different knee braces. <laughs> uh, which is impressive. Ultimate Frisbee. That started when we were in high school. Like, no one played Ultimate Frisbee, I thought, until, like, it, in the mid-90s. It was around, but I think it was just in Northern California. Yeah. Hacky Sack was also big. Oh, Hacky Sack was huge. Oh, yeah. Ross, Ultimate Frisbee, uh, X-Wing, uh, what's your what's your poison that you know I'm sorry, I did end up with? listing, like, seven things. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah. It took a turn. No, no, no. that's great. Uh, loves hearing all about the X-Wings and about all the... Um, uh, insecure aggression that's being taken out with the, with the with whipped disc. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my uh, my hobbies are like I don't know. I feel like all I have are hobbies, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, I don't know. I years ago I, I I did have some time and I got really into like cassette culture. So I like collect cassettes and I and I and I released four uh, small press. Cassettes of... Oh, uh, we're talking audio cassettes? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, uh, um, of music. And I haven't done it in a while, but I'd love to get back into it. I've got my my, my little synthesizers and mixers oh, back yeah. there. It'd be fun to, to get back in. So you're just you just pressing cassettes in your... Yeah, yeah. It was fun. I, like, did everything. I recorded them and, and bought bought blank cassettes from a place that makes them in all kinds of different colors. Uh Created the the labels, printed them off. It was all. It was very very DIY. Uh, That's awesome. Proposition. That's yes, fun. and sold them at, at local at local shops and over <laughs> uh, and, and over the mail. <laughs> Can you make a theme for our show? Uh, yeah. Okay. Challenge Gauntlet Throne. Um, I, will, <laughs> I will make a theme for the show. Yes. Nice. Yay. Yes. It can replace the one that we use <laughs> uh, uh, when it's a Vaughn heavy episode. <laughs> uh, what about you, Kate? Are you uh, you uh, you got hobbies, right? What do, what do you got going on over there? I mean, I have things I like to do, but I don't like doing them with other people. Uh, like, I like playing video games alone. I don't want to mm -hmm. play with other people. I just started drawing again. That's an alone thing. Even yeah. when I like, I would I I learned to knit, and I would go to the bar with my friend with all my knitting stuff, and she would bring her jewelry making stuff, and we would just sit next to each other and do our stuff. I love that. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, nice. That's the, the mark thing, of a true friend. Yeah. Like, I don't like doing things with other people outside of socializing. <laughs> right. I like socializing. <laughs> you just like, like to get blackout drunk with a stranger and knit. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I think would be nice is if um, I used to do jujitsu more, and it would be nice if I had friends who liked to do like jujitsu and kickboxing, because I feel like that would make me go more if like I had a good friend who did it. And it would be fun to like fight each other. And like you wrestle. like rolling with, with yeah, the people? Yeah, I was like fighting fun? like grown men. Um, nice. I miss fun. martial arts. I did oh. that too. Me too. And I just fun. Yeah. haven't for a while. Yeah. Troy, you were a big, you were like in, uh, what did you do? Karate, I did taekwondo? Kenpo. Yeah, I Kenpo. did Kenpo for years and I was just about to test for my black belt when I, I timed it bad. It was like time to go to college and uh, so I, I, I didn't test. I always wanted to get back into it, you know what I mean? But like nowadays, when you're in your 40s, it's like, if you're, you have one opportunity to do uh, something health related, it's like you can either lift weights, yep. do CrossFit, be a marathonist, or take martial arts. You know, you can't be like, well, I'm, I've got kids, so I'll just wake up at 4 a.m., take a, an hour and a half jujitsu class, then well, hit the gym for do. some free weights. This is, you're bringing people together again. You and I are going to sign up for a jujitsu class and we're going to fight each other. Do we have to touch strangers though? I don't know. Yeah, that's the problem. No, but that's the thing. Listen, I don't like touching strangers either, but I like choking strangers. <laughs> so like, you're, you're talking my It's language. a trade-off. Is that <laughs> one of those shirts that you'll see on the court, Rob? <laughs> I don't yeah, like touchy. choking strangers. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what I know. It's like, oh, this guy's going to guard me like an asshole. <laughs> I could get into that. BJJ was huge now with the UFC blowing up. I was way into UFC for a while. But anyways, this is, I find this all very interesting. My hobby that I'm not going to get too far into because I want to jump into the episode is I started this at the beginning of COVID and I talk about it all the time now. I got way back into collecting sports cards and it's, mm. uh, it's taking over my life and I, I don't even want to play games anymore. I just want to. I just want to go on eBay. So uh, I'm going to humor you guys for the next hour and 45 minutes. And then Can, I've, yeah. got, I've got a couple auctions I have to look at. Can you not yeah. make a game? Is there not already a game? 
that uses baseball cards? I'm sure there is, but like I, I'm enjoying the, the I don't know, I, I was so into it as a kid. And then when COVID hit and all mm. sports stopped, the business boomed because everybody was like so desperate to have some sports to latch on to. So they started buying cards again. So all of a sudden cards, yeah. the card market blew up and I'm, I'm just, it's, it's becoming a problem. Uh, but it's so much fun. I'm listening to fucking podcasts. I'm reading magazines, <laughs> yeah. selling stock. I'm investing in cards. It's great. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, sell all your stocks, buy cards. That's where the money's at. Um, let's the talk original about original NFTs. The original. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even. Very, very different. You can actually hold it in your hand. Yeah. Oh, you can hold it. Can yeah. we do hot takes about NFTs now? <laughs> <laughs> They're old news. Um, what the hell happened last week? You guys... Uh, Nothing, really. You guys I went mean, to the DMV. You, <laughs> you went up to Sing Sing Prison to try and speak to Hilton Adams, who was cool. arrested for murders similar to the murder of Jackson Elias, uh, were laughed away by the cops, but you did leave with some information uh, that, uh, oh, are you friends of the, the reporter, Rebecca Schosenberg, who uh, wrote the article about Jackson Elias' death? Uh, or are you friends of his wife who comes here all the time? Oh, okay, so his wife comes here. Right, so you got a couple connects. You come back, and uh, meanwhile, uh, Carter and uh, Fayrouz break into the uh, newly minted uh, three-employee DMV uh, to look for some information on this car. You found out that it was uh, stolen uh, uptown uh, on, I believe, Lexington Avenue. It belonged to a man named... Uh, Thomas Witherspoon, I believe. So you got a lead there, um, and you pissed on the guy's desk that was mean to you and Slow. left. Mm -hmm. Reconvened, went to the funeral the next day, and uh, obviously a somber affair. Uh, you meet uh, Jackson's publisher, Jonah Kensington, whose name you saw pop up on some correspondence. Uh, he tells you, you should come by his office, uh, Prospero House Publishing. Um, he needs to talk to you. Jackson came and saw him uh, when he came back to New York and they spoke. He thinks you guys should speak. And then also there's a man, a guy by the name of Carlton Ramsey and his niece, uh, who Carlton was Jackson's lawyer. But both Carlton and Jonah clearly seemed like they were friends with Jackson as well, very close friends. And uh, they invited you to the reading of, the, uh, he invited you to the reading of Jackson's will in his office Monday morning. It says you were all named in it. So um, you've got a couple leads. There's a bunch of reporters at the funeral. They're, they're probably uh, like, Vultures now at this point because Hilton Adams was arrested uh, for these murders and yet there's a new murder. They want to ask all these questions. Uh, and then meanwhile, Lieutenant Martin Poole comes up and puts you in his squad car because you've been got. Let's do a luck improvement roll here. Oh, While geez. you guys roll that, remember you're trying to get over your luck here. And if you do, you'll get a D10 uh, worth of luck back. Uh, a couple rules things. Last week, we uh, we used luck on a push roll. Can't do that. Uh, in the heat of our excitement, we uh, I allowed it. But uh, yeah, can't do that. Can't use luck on luck rolls. Can't use luck on pushed rolls. Uh, also, uh, Vaughn, um, Michael pointed out uh, between sessions, uh, regains a, a hit point of day. Um, so uh, he's now up to eight out of nine. Um, and I joked in an email this morning uh, that he will wake up in prison uh, back to full health shortly before Hooray. his execution. <laughs> um, but let's pick, oh yeah, what'd you guys do? Did anybody uh, improve their luck? Oh. Yep. Got nine I, points. Or no, yeah. I did not succeed on that. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, you and then I just roll a d10 and take the yeah, D10, and then add it to your luck. Well, we're in the money, y'all. Don't worry, I'm adding one whole point <laughs> to my luck score. You'll live forever. Kate, you uh, improve? Yep, I got nine. Woo! Ooh. Just good, I needed it. I feel like I failed the last couple times. Kata? No, I rolled probably what will be the lowest roll of the evening for me. I rolled a 13. Oh, wait. I want to get under or over? You want to get over. Right. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, you want to fail. So, Lieutenant Poole uh, puts you in his uh, car. Mm. You're all kind of jammed in the backseat. It's not a squad car. Um, he doesn't put you in cuffs. Really doesn't make a big scene out of this, uh, especially with all those reporters around. Uh, but, you know, 
I'm sure some of them know this is a police officer. It seems very strange. Uh, puts you in the back of his car and drives you um, through Brooklyn back into Manhattan. And you actually uh, pass by the street where the Hotel Chelsea is. And he brings you to a precinct um, on West 20th Street, right around the corner from the hotel. Uh, he brings you in and uh, brings you into a long hallway with a bunch of doors and sits each of each of you in like individual interrogation rooms leaves you waiting there uh for a long time you know obviously the funeral was in the morning by the time you get back uh to manhattan and you go through some just general hubbub and you're sitting you're sitting there for what feels like over an hour um until a pool comes into uh, Vaughn's room. And he uh, sits down across from you, Vaughn, and says, uh, can, you, uh, can you explain to me what you were doing at the uh, Hotel Chelsea on the night of January the 15th? Um... And Vaughn is like, wheels are turning. It was like, prisoner's dilemma. How does this uh, work? But also it was like, I mean, if they've come this far, they know so much. They saw us coming, going. Um, <clears throat> I was there to meet a friend. And uh, what was this friend's name? He's taking notes here while you're talking. Well, sadly, I believe you know this friend's name. Because, uh, my friend, I should hope, is currently in one of your city's morgues receiving... Oh, no. I, in fact, I just left his side. Seeing as he's currently being interred in Brooklyn. On Mr. Jackson Elias, a very close friend of mine. So you're a friend of the deceased, Mr. Elias. Yeah. Um, were you, was he expecting you? Did you have a, a, a planned meeting, hangout? Arrived in this country, sir, and indeed his rooms at his personal summons. Okay. But what time did you come to the uh, Hotel Chelsea? And that's something that I'm sure Vaughn remembers in great detail. And, <laughs> and tells him. He says so. <laughs> ah. Okay. We've, uh, we've done some digging on you, Mr. Villiers. You're a veteran. Um, you know, for a lot of men who have uh, fought out there, they uh, took the war home with them. Sometimes maybe they struggle to tell who's a friend, who's an enemy. Is that maybe what happened the other night, Mr. Villiers? I have the pleasure of speaking to another veteran of the late unpleasantness, Mr. Poole. No, no, thankfully, uh, my service is right here. But uh, I have friends, and uh, I know what they've been through. I don't mean to offend, but I'm wondering if maybe that's maybe that's what happened here. You went to see your friend, and I can uh, assure you, sir, I can assure you, in the fog of war, that yes, when one finds themselves in no man's land, yes, it is quite difficult to distinguish friend from foe. In fact, that damnable confusion is one of the most wretched things about it. But, I believe it instills within you, as much as it instills in, your, in some of us, a, uh, a shattering fear of such things. When we do meet people of ferocious loyalty, goodness of character, uprightness, and compassion, qualities that the late Mr. Elias had in a great abundance, and we bind those individuals to us with hoops of steel, knowing just how rare those qualities are. You say he uh, summoned you? Yes. To uh, his uh, maybe, hotel? I might even have one of the telegrams on me. Like, mm -hmm. 
what, what, uh, what was so urgent that you needed to be uh, summoned at uh, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night at a hotel room? And uh, you obviously weren't alone. Had some friends with you. Yes, indeed. We form a, 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 a bond that transcends um, the boundaries of nations. Uh, we, we've you know, aided uh, Mr. Elias in his uh, researches. Research that brought us um, uh, to part south. Part south? Where? And where about south? Down in uh, Alabama? Florida? I'm afraid I haven't had the pleasure. No, um... Though we did spend some time in Peru. Peru? As you say that, we cut to him in a room with Feyre's same setup. So you're a uh, graduate student at Miskatonic up in Massachusetts. Correct. As you see Feyre's open up a silver monogrammed cigarette case, take one out and light it up. And uh, what are you studying? up there at uh, Miskatonic. I study cryptology. Cryptology. What uh, brings you to New York, specifically uh, the Hotel Chelsea the other night? Well, I received an invitation by Mr. Jackson Elias to have a little reunion. Mm -hmm. And what happened when you uh, approached Mr. Elias' apartment? Apartment? Or his hotel room. Oh. Well. It's my understanding that he was using it as an apartment. Sadly. Didn't get to find out why. And why is that? Well, you were there at the funeral, weren't you? I was, but I want to know more about what happened the actual night. You uh, went up to his room. Walk me through this. Well. The wish to find out what happened makes two of us. So you never spoke to Mr. Elias that night? Never saw you? Sadly, no. Hmm. I was very concerned for him, you see. Very concerned? Yeah, I can imagine. Because uh, we have some reports from some eyewitnesses that saw you and uh, the British gentleman downstairs in the elevator uh, speaking, actually, to some of my officers. Uh, and other people saw you outside uh, during some commotion when a car sped off. Do, do you remember anything about that? Well, there was a car that sped off. I found it very peculiar. What kind of car was it? Do you remember? Uh, I believe uh, <laughs> as Nora, not Beirut, checks her notes. Stop stalling! Gibran! <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what you know. Uh, I believe it was a 1915 Black Hudson Touring Roadster. Mm -hmm. Good memory. I was only able to catch a bit of the fate. See, mm. but I found it very suspicious that they had all this commotion had gone about and they had sped off. And then we come to find our unfortunate circumstance with our dear friend. Having some trouble with the timeline of this event. So, from what I understand, you had an appointment to meet Mr. Elias around 8 p.m. You go to his room, you don't hear from him, you don't connect with him. But right. then, shortly around, say, 8.45 p.m., you and your friend speak to my officers. and uh, Some story about newlyweds, maybe. But then earlier than that, maybe around... 8.15, 8.20 or so, I got reports of seeing you outside seeing this car, which you remember very specifically as a blah, 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 and he repeats back to you what you just <laughs> said. So, I'm just, I'm having a little trouble understanding here um, what you're not telling me. Well, it is correct that I did say that my friend and I were honeymooning. But you have to understand that once you 
could see a promotion like this and well you know how things are around here you can never trust anyone we didn't know if the circumstances were suspicious under Mr. Elias's unfortunate passing he leans in he's like you know I'm trying to help here right now listen I would love for you to come in here and tell me that you had something to do with all this I don't think you did but I do think you know things that can help me well I would start with that vehicle and we leave there and now he's sitting across from Margo arms folded just staring at you is Margot nervous at all? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the room alone, hoping that we're all doing the same thing and no one's, I don't know, yeah, hope everything goes well. He's just staring at you, he's a big guy. I think I said he looked like back in the day, maybe when he was younger, he had like the, the football player's physique, but now he's getting old. The muscles turn into fat, but he's still just a big guy and he's staring at you. And he's like, uh, Miss Sauer. You're from Germany, yes? Yes. May I ask what a, a young lady uh, from Germany is doing, uh, hanging out uh, here in New York around uh, a murder scene? Well, I was here to meet the person that was murdered. And Jackson Elias, that? he is our friend. Jackson Elias, he's your friend? Yes. You had a, a, a meeting planned with him? Yes, with my other friends. And your friends, you all went to his apartment uh, around 8 p.m.-ish or so, his, his hotel room? It was a hotel we were mm -hmm. supposed to meet him. Walk me through that. You uh, knock on the door. And she maybe goes inward and just looks around like because how do you tell someone what you saw without sounding crazy and he just kind of leans in he's not menacing he's just kind of he sees that maybe there's something here it's all right i imagine you saw some some pretty horrible things maybe things you haven't seen before can you help me out and just tell me what you saw? <sighs> it just... Listen. We came to meet our friend. That was it. We came uh, to meet our friend. Okay, you met your friend, but your friend wasn't there. Or if he was, but... Did, did, you, did, you, did you get in? Did you open the door? Did you see anybody that did this? Did you see... Your friend? I did see my friend. You did? And was he still alive? No. He wasn't. Did you see anybody else in the room? Many people. Many people? How many people? I think it was three, right? Three. I remember from our notes. Uh, what do they look like? Uh, white guys, black guys, Hispanic? Oh. Jeez, as she vis visibly tries to remember while I look at my notes. I mean, the room, it, it wasn't shambles. Uh, I mean, Jackson was the way he was. Um, Any distinguishing characteristics of these? The men, they were all wearing like suits, but they had like a flannel checkered like scarf tied around their head. All three of them the same. Okay. And what happened next? I mean, it's happened so fast. So Van had a knife. Van had a machete. Um, I think Van was climbing out the window. And we saw our friend and we tried to stop z those men. And we did it. And cut out of there. Yeah, it good. got hairy, and 
I feel and then we it's we're here now. We cut out of there. They sitting there looking at Carter. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Oh, yes. did you want to talk about something? Yeah, I want to ask you, uh, if you don't mind me asking, um, what happened to your face? It was an you accident. Affected? Yeah, no, no, God, no. This is an accident on my, uh, 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 my estate, my property. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a mare, a horse, that means horse, and uh, she kicked. And she kicked me right in the face. So. <laughs> This property is in uh, Massachusetts, yes? Yeah. You're Are we being to... charged with something, sir? I know a little thing or two about the law here. I feel like we're getting a little bit of a runaround. We were putting this car very silently, mm-hmm. separated us. I know your tactics. Yeah, no, right now you're, uh, you aren't being charged, but uh, if I were you, I would uh, stay right where you're sitting so we could chat a little bit longer because I got this other report about you. Maybe, maybe it wasn't you but it was a man that matched your description, causing some trouble at the DMV yesterday, Department of Motor Vehicles. It's a new department here in the city. Yeah. And then I get a report this morning that they had a break-in last night. Now, I'm not saying you were that guy. I'm not saying that you had anything to do with this. But if you make this a little more difficult for me, then maybe I gotta start going and doing some digging down there and seeing if you did have any connection to that. So while I'm not charging you for anything here, maybe if I start digging over there, then I'll find something to charge you with. Well, that'd be refreshing, because then you'd be doing your goddamn job. Let me tell you what I know so far. Yeah, tell me, hit me, Jack. You and your friends have a meeting with this Jackson Elias, 8 p.m., Hotel Chelsea. Saint of a man, by the way. Put that in your notes. By all accounts, you get there. There's a, it's unclear here from some of your friends' stories whether or not you go in. It appears that you did go in. You see the deceased, obviously a horrible scene, room ransacked, and there are multiple attackers. Yeah. A chase ensues. That's right. And they take off in a, names the make of the car. Am I missing anything so far? Apart from the fact you guys haven't caught these dudes. Yeah, no, you nailed it. Explain to me why you and your friends run. Did you find something in there? Why we ran after the assailants? Because I just assumed NYPD was not gonna be able to catch them. Uh, Why you ran from the scene of the crime and didn't talk to me or my officers when we came to the scene? We're in the middle of an investigation, okay? I'm sorry, are you you an officer? Uh, No, I'm a bit of a crime fighter. You might say. I find evil and I stamp it out. Sir, I don't know how they do things up in Massachusetts, but here, the crime fighters wear a badge. And he slams his badge on the table. Oh yeah, you're gonna flash your buzzer at me? That's slang for a badge in the 20s. It's pretty good. Letting you know that. Googled it while you guys were talking to other people. You gotta explain to me mm. how Google? I'm supposed to how I'm supposed to look at this. How am I supposed to look at this? There is a a dead body, and there's four people fleeing the scene. Yeah. Now, I don't think you had anything to do with the murder, but I think we you didn't. guys know something that you're not telling me. So please help me. Help me help your friend. All right. Here's the straight news, Jack. We get in there. Our buddy. Again, just a, a saint, saint of a man. man. That's yeah. right. Did you write that one down? I wrote it down. Gutted like a pig. Just uh, intestines everywhere. These three bros are there. Headbands, knives of various shapes and sizes. They flee. All right, now we're consumed with vengeance. Uh I, I don't know what came over me. I jumped out of a four story window, landed like a puma. They got away. All right, now these guys, they got in a car. I'm sure you have it written down somewhere, 1915 uh, Hudson Turek. Hudson Turek. Black. Mm-hmm. Zip away. Bob's your uncle. 
right? My friend Vaughn would say that. Then, well, then we run. Why do we run? Again, who's to say what lurks in the hearts of humans? But when it comes to righting wrongs, the four of us, the buddy squad, as we like to be called, we wanted to get to the bottom of this. And frankly, don't take this the wrong way. NYPD, you guys a little bit corrupt, a little bit uh, kind of got your head up your ass. You know, I mean, we had leads. We had leads. Give me a fast duck roll. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, it took you long enough. <laughs> First fast one giving talk. the cop the business. Okay, my fast talk's a five. Really? <laughs> Don't see what happens. It could be char your charm. Go charm. I got charm. Uh, yeah, I got charm. I'm not going to hamper you with the wrong roll. I got a 68 under a 75. Okay, so success. It's enough for him to just shake his head. Now look, before you say anything else, let me, let me ask you a question. Hmm. Do you want to deputize us? Four Absolutely of us not, no. Are, I don't know why that, oh, that was very quick. No, I'm thinking about uh, keeping you here overnight, maybe. Mm. Under then, normal circumstances, I would just uh, keep you here, throw you in a cell, or maybe bring you downtown and put you in gen pop. Just feel like that's a bad. I feel like that's a bad call. I mean, you essentially were investigators. A bad call is not telling me everything you know. I told you we went after them. I told you the car. That's about it. We're as frustrated as you are. I don't know if that's true. You don't seem very frustrated. You're right. flash out of there <laughs> and now he's got all four of you in a room together and he says you know if I didn't have so much going on right now with this investigation I would charge you and I would lock you up if for nothing else than to teach you a lesson that if you find a dead body here in New York or anywhere, you don't flee the scene. You know how bad that looks? Now, the only reason I'm not doing that is I don't think you had anything to do with this, but I do think you know things. And if you want to be like Mr. Tillinghast here as uh, amateur investigators going around trying to solve crimes, let me tell you something about people who do that here in New York City. They end up the next one's dead or worse. Now, you're not being charged. Whew. And you're free to leave. Right. But oh. before you go, I just want to tell you something. If Mr. Elias was indeed your friend, as you have all said he was, then perhaps you'll answer me a couple of questions that's going to help me, a, a professional investigator, dig into this case. I don't know if you're aware of this, but this is actually the uh, ninth murder of its kind in the last two years. Similar to your friend here, Mr. Elias, the victims, all the other eight victims were found uh, mutilated with this thing carved into their forehead. Were they all um, in the same line of work? Well, no, beyond that, none of the victims seem to be connected in any way, nor does your friend seem to be connected to any of the former victims. They came from all walks of life. They were poor, wealthy, middle-class, black, white, from all over the city. The only thing connecting them was that mark on their forehead. There was this doctor, doctor, uh, he like looks through some papers, doctor by the name of uh, Mordecai Lemming. The uh, pictures got leaked uh, to the press uh, showing this symbol. Uh, he uh, went on record uh, saying that, that, that perhaps it was linked to some uh, African death cult. When we went and, and questioned him, uh, he, he didn't have any other useful information beyond that. He's not a medical doctor, by the way. He's like a eccentric Manhattan folklorist. But... Uh... Carter takes a tiny note notebook and pencil out of his jacket. He's like, what else can you tell us about the victims? <laughs> uh, well, I can tell you that uh, up until this latest body was found, your friend, excuse me, uh, the investigation was closed when uh, Captain Robeson 
of the 14th precinct in Harlem arrested a uh, local man by the name of Hilton Adams, uh, who was found at the scene of the eighth murder. Now, there hadn't been any murders since until your friends here. So that makes me wonder if maybe other people are involved or uh, perhaps Robeson got the wrong guy. Is any of this information maybe uh, make you think of something that you think would be helpful to me? I feel like we all just kind of look slowly around at each other like, hmm. No, oh, not at the not at the moment. But if anything comes up, you're our first call. Mm-hmm. What was your friend up to? Hmm? Said. What do we love to know? Said that he was summoning you. You don't just get summoned to an apartment from Germany, from England, from Massachusetts. There was something important, and I don't know why you want to hold this information from me, but I think something's going on. And I tell you right now, Robeson's not going to be the one to figure it out. So why can't we, why can't we work together here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Give us a badge. Give us four badges. No, we're not giving you any Okay, don't give us a badge, but give us a document that says we- I want information about your friend. What was he up to? Perhaps we could do a bit of exchange. We give you some information, you give us access to records. That's not how this works, Mr. Brown. You give me information, I go out and do my job, and I try and find your friend's killers. You don't give me information, then your friend died for nothing. Yeah, I guess you, uh, oh, sorry, Vaughn. I don't want the name you. Ju- no, no. Cut you off. Go ahead, my friend. The name you just dropped. Uh, the name you just dropped. Sport Mordecai Lemming, the doctor. That was oh. someone you interviewed about the murders, not a victim himself. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. When uh, when the photos got leaked to the press of these uh, these forehead marks, uh, he came forward said that he believed they were linked to some sort of African death cult. Well, the press had a field day with that. Uh, you know, we looked into it. Uh, you know, I, I do think that there is some sort of uh, uh, ritualistic uh, situation going on here. The, the, the way that all the bodies were mutilated, uh, they all have this symbol. It just doesn't add up. And it just doesn't add up to this man that's sitting on death row. So I'm thinking maybe, maybe he did have something to do with it. Maybe he had some friends who are still out there. Or maybe Robeson got the wrong guy. Well, there is a book that might help you, but we're having trouble finding it. Perhaps you'd be, perhaps you would have better luck. And what's the name of that book? Uh, I believe Mr. Lemming might might be uh, less of a crackpot than you gave him credit for, old sport. And the name of the book you're after, and I need you to listen terribly closely <laughs> so that there's no confusion, uh-huh. is Africa's Dark Sects. What's that? Uh? Sects. You spell that last word? The Dark Six of Africa. <laughs> S-E-C-T. Sext. Sext. Book that um uh, has been... um banned by your uh, estimable country with its uh, uh, its great quantity of largesse and freedom for uh, obscenity. Yes, and aren't you the ones that go around and collect these books that are banned? Perhaps uh, you've come across it. That's that's not my job. I, I don't deal with collecting books. But uh, this was a book that your friend, Mr. Elias, was interested in? Yes. Well, that's interesting. And these sorts of, um, I mean, you barely needed to hear it from us if you looked over his curriculum vitae, but cults of this sort, and the sort that this um, lemming chap were speaking of, were Mr. Elias's bailiwick. Right. Well, I, I know he was an author. Uh, I've never 
read any of his work, but he was interested in all this sort of cult stuff, apparently. Listen, obviously something's going on here that is uh, different from your average murder. Well, you know where I am, and I obviously know how to find you. So, uh, if you think of anything else, I would appreciate it. And I'm sure your friend would appreciate it as well if he came and uh, spoke with me. And uh, I want to ask you a favor. Bring it to me and don't bring it to Robson. Why is that? It's just... I'd prefer if this information stayed in this precinct. All right. Well, uh, if you want to roll a persuade or a charm here, you can. Let me uh, see how persuasive and charming I am. Not very charming. Is there a persuade? What's what's the uh, persuade's on like the top right? Aha! Even worse. (laughs) (laughs) So let me see what I can roll here. Yeah, no, not even close. I want to try. If I shouldn't you work together with uh, your fellow uh, co-worker? Uh, I'd rather not work work with that uh, with that department. Is yeah, it your you opinion me... that this uh, Hilton Adams was railroaded? You've brought up his uh, perhaps being not the right man for the crime a number of times. Are you telling me it's possible that NYPD could arrest the wrong person? <laughs> Uh, I just think it's rather strange that the man that they arrested uh, is locked up right now and yet another murder exactly like that happens and you now tell me there were three men there so either Adams is involved with some group and he was just the unlucky one that got caught or he's innocent yes what'd you roll Kate? oh 29 under 50. Nice. Hey. The reason I'm being a little dodgy about Captain Robeson is uh, I've heard some rumors that uh, he's not exactly on the up and up. When uh, these uh, murders started becoming more frequent and people started linking them together, uh, he lobbied early on uh, for the for the role to uh, lead up the investigation so he could crack down on uh, what he referred to as disruptive elements in his precinct. The fact of the matter is, not all the murders were happening in Harlem. These were happening all over the city. Um, but he got the investigation. And this isn't sour grapes. It's not something that I wanted on my back. I've got to deal with the murders that happen in my precinct. And I understand they're all linked. There's a greater thing going on here. But I have a feeling Robeson isn't uh, on the up and up. And, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. Well, thank you for your cooperation, Lieutenant. We'll be in contact if we have any more questions. (laughs) Carter stands up. (laughs) Yeah, I'll be in contact as well. No, I'll contact you. We'll contact you. Yes, I'm sure we'll all have cause to contact each other before too long. But we'll probably contact you first. Yes. Again, thank you so much for your help. As long as we all understand each other. I don't know if we do. Beerus puts out her cigarette on the desk. (laughs) On his palm. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) You put out your cigarette on his head. Guys are bad. I love how Beerus and Carter are just so antagonistic. (laughs) Don't worry. (laughs) Don't like cops, man. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Don't like them cops. Uh. You leave, and you've been there for the better part of the day. Um, he really, really held you over the coals there, trying to see if you could get any information out of you. Uh, obviously, didn't arrest you, so that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. You were, uh, some of you were kind of a dick to him, but 
that's okay. Uh, he got on his bad side. Seems like a nice enough guy. Seems pretty exasperated and is a little concerned about this Captain Robeson. It's, uh, we'll say it's around four o'clock on Saturday. You've got uh, an opportunity to uh, meet with Jonah Kensington at Prospero House Publishing. You've got the will reading on Monday. Uh, and also Rebecca Schosenberg, the reporter uh, who was mentioned at the prison, who wrote the article on Elias, said to come by her office as well. Tomorrow is Sunday. Uh, so, you know, you're going to kind of have to p probably push a lot of those meetings off. Uh, you don't think she'll be at her office on Sunday. Prosper House is probably closed and the will readings on Monday. So you've got the rest of the day here on Saturday. It's already four o'clock. Not like the day is over, but I don't know how much else, where else you want to break into uh, or what other cops you want to bully. Um, mm -hmm. But what is your plan for like the rest of the day, Saturday and Sunday, before you can really get back into it on Monday? I'm interested to see what we have in the will. What are we getting? Yeah, maybe yeah, find definitely, out Monday. Definitely want to go to the will reading. Magical um, items. I feel like maybe. That's, that's not that, okay. So that's, that's not Monday, yeah. the immediate. So, okay, so um, all of those immediate meetings are are kind of punted. Um, Monday is going to be rough. Oh, it's a, I am absolutely swamped. I have not <laughs> had a packed calendar in a while. Back to back <laughs> meetings. Um, you just want to come and relax in New York, and you got all these meetings, right? All I mean, right, I really well, want to talk to that reporter, and yeah. I'd and I'd uh, and just because we spent all that time uh, talking with various librarians, going to like some sort of like antiquarian bookshop or a cult bookstore or something and seeing if we can find a, a copy of Africa's Dark Sex that fell through the cracks. Well, how about... How there's about, Dr. Mordecai Lemming. Yeah, yeah that's where I was going to go. With he might know. Yeah. There's, yeah. A doc, there's a doctor and then also if uh, Carlisle's sister is still a person who exists, I feel like maybe finding out something about that and mm -hmm. then making sure we organize our day efficiently on Monday. <laughs> Sunday's yeah. going to be mostly planning. Mostly yeah, and by we the way, could perfectly, also try to, oh. try to stake out that car that's in on Lexington Avenue somewhere, belong to Thomas Witherspoon, or maybe talk to Thomas Witherspoon. Right. You could try and track down Thomas Witherspoon. Um, also, just throwing it out there, it's perfectly reasonable to be like, "We'll just can we just fast forward till Monday? You don't have to always do something every minute no, no. of the day." <laughs> no, no. So we'll play every well, single day. First of all, it's assume this entire conversation is happening at a uh, speakeasy. Right, right. right. We went right straight. below the police station. Yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, well, I feel like I feel like do the Doctor Mordecai would not necessarily require a Monday. We're waiting till Monday, right? I feel like that's a knock on the door. Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, you you seem to have some thoughts about this thing. That you're probably pretty passionate about. Maybe we'll. Yeah. Talk to him on Sunday. Maybe he has a sneaky copy of a book that's banned, since he's an eccentric yeah. folklorist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, did we hear also that Hilton Adams, the man in prison, that his wife is still out there kicking around? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yep. Also, it's probably not the smartest move, but tailing uh, Robeson, seeing what he's up to, sounds dirty. Yeah, I feel like after after hearing what Poole said, um, suspicions are sparked in Vaughn's mind and probably others that like, is this Robeson in on it? Well, he's mm -hmm. a captain too, right? So that's above lieutenant, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what if they have, yeah. uh, this cult has pull within the NYPD and- Wheels within wheels. Tendrils are everywhere. Yeah. A lot of sweet, sexy options. Oh. Uh, what you think about it? I think I'm mm -hmm. going to go to the museum this weekend, maybe the Met. Does anyone want to come? Yeah, I mean, what else would we do? This is fine. Awesome. I'm pretty sure it's free for students. Uh, yeah, free. You can pay what you want on Sundays, so perfect. Uh, all right, so you guys go to the museum, and we will uh, listen to this word from our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Cultural <laughs> enrichment. Museum we look at the check. wall and framed is... <laughs> Sponsor. <laughs> Kleenex. That, that would be art at like a modern museum. Mm -hmm. Honestly. <laughs> oh, this is like some kind of pop art thing. This is really mm -hmm. in. It's like an Andy Warhol thing for Kleenex. Really, like, confrontation. 
What is art, really? All right, so you wake up early Sunday. You hit the mat, which I think might have been around in 25. I don't know. I don't feel like looking it up. Don't yell at me. Don't yell art, at me. Art um, did not exist. Oh, Art yet. did not exist until 1936. <laughs> Everybody Canon. knows that. Yep. And uh, and if maybe the group goes to the mat, maybe uh, uh, Vaughn tries to sneak in a, a mass before the trip. Ah, uh, you uh, suck up. Yeah, I wonder when he's a new He's a new man. You call him a suck up? Yeah, to God. <laughs> Going to <laughs> God, suck up church. People always sucking up to God. Uh, like, oh, oh, yeah. like Vaughn's on his way. And Carter's like, he's not listening. <laughs> well, you know what's perfect, Vaughn? If you are staying at the Waldorf Astoria, then you would absolutely go to St. Patrick's Cathedral right there perfect. on Fifth Avenue. Uh, mm-hmm. Hop, skip, and a jump from the Waldorf. Uh, if you Do you think you'd been to New York before? This moment? Yes, I believe yeah. he has, but um, okay. but not, but briefly. Okay, well now, now you can take in the sights while uh, ruminating upon your friend's horrid murder, mm-hmm. uh, and you go into the church beautifully. Have you ever been to St. Patrick's? I think I've only seen it from the outside. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty cool. It's been around since the uh, it was constructed or started construction in 1858. Uh, and was dedicated in 1879. It's beautiful. Uh, definitely worth checking out um, if you're ever in the city. So you go there. Uh, we'll say that it's uh, classic. Uh, the uh, Mass is in Latin. Uh, somber. You say a little prayer for your friend, Jackson. And then you show up late to the museum. You've got the whole day Sunday and then a jam-packed Monday. Before I get into anything you might want to do on Sunday, what's the order of events for Monday? Will reading first? Well, we know that um, meeting with the reporter needs to come before trying to go meet the guy in the prison. And is there anything else that needs to be in a certain order? And the Prospero House wanted to wanted to see us. Yep, Jonah mm-hmm. Kensington at But is that where the will, isn't that where the will reading is happening, as in those two dudes? No, Ramsey, Carlton so. Ramsey is the lawyer. Uh, oh, but they're buddies. He's buddy yeah. with the Prospero They're husband. buddies, yeah. And yeah, they want to talk to us. They I both want to chat with you. If we, if we do the will reading first, if there's something, any new information that we gain from that, it might alter the yeah. order of events that we... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You want to go... Carlton yeah. Ramsey for the will reading and then swing over to Prospero House for yeah. the for the meeting with Jonah Kensington. And then re- reporters, like, she'll she'll be having a drink somewhere. Uh, or yeah. They're always waiting for stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, her office is on 43rd Street, so, uh, yeah, you can kind of, you could bang them all out in a day and see yep. what, what time it is. And somewhere in there, we'll do brunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah nice you brunch. Know, bottomless mimosas. <laughs> <Yeah>. Monday brunch. <laughs> Monday <laughs> brunch. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you want to do for the rest of Sunday here? Should we try to find Mordecai? Yeah, you want to try to find uh, Mordecai so. Lemming? Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, let's just do a general. Somebody do a library use roll here Ooh. to see if you can track hey, down his address. I'm good at that. Yes. I'm good at that. Here we go. Nineteen. Ooh, under yeah. under fifty, we okay. don't even have to try. She's got it. Yeah, <laughs> um, he's pretty easy to uh, track down, as it uh, as it were. He uh, he lives at the Murray Hill Hotel on East Fortieth Street and Park Avenue, not far from the Waldorf. Um, although a bit of a hike from the Met. So, do you have a map up, Troy? Or is this just your general New York City knowledge? Uh, well, it, it helps that I live lived here for twenty years, but yeah. uh, you know, I do. There is there is like some good maps of uh, well, the Mets New York. in the Upper East Side, right? Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure. I actually don't care. Uh. We've gone too far. <laughs> well, we've gone too far down this road already. Um, yeah, I can't show you this map right now because it has stuff I don't want you to see, but there's a great map of Manhattan. I'll, I'll clean it up and take some things off uh, just to show you 1920s. I just want to know, the Met was founded in 1870, so oh, everything, is everything is fine. Everything is fine. 
Look at all the YouTube comments. (laughs) He just went and looked at all the Jackson Pollocks. Oh, wait, no, he wasn't producing. Uh, No, No, I ruined the immersion. They Um, have a Banksy. (laughs) (laughs) Banksy's. All right, so do you want to, like, just stop in unannounced on this doctor's home? I feel like, yeah. That could go wrong. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, we're always knocking on doors and having cool experiences. Right. That yeah. is, that's classic Call of Cthulhu. All mm-hmm. right, so you head over to Park Avenue. Um, and you get to this building, old, classic old New York building along Park Avenue. You know, if, if you don't know Park Avenue, New York, uh, whereas uh, most of the streets are one way, Park Avenue is like a double avenue. So one side of the street, the cars are going this way, the other side of the street. And then there's a huge strip in the medium. There's a lot going on, especially on 40th Street, um, the closer you get to, to Times Square. So big, big building. And... Uh, you see there's a double stairway leading up to the entrance of this uh, hotel turned apartment building uh, which leads into a marble lined reception hall you see two smartly liveried doormen tall like strapping dudes uh, they uh, open the door for you and say uh, good morning and maybe they uh, or good afternoon they give kind of a, a sideways glance at Feyruz, Carter and Margot uh, because you were dressed uh, a little shabbily uh, when compared to Vaughn just looking at straight up credit rating Vaughn's credit rating is like a 90 and you guys sit around like 10 or 20 so uh, you know this is Park Avenue and they I might give you a sideways glance but they open the doors How dare, I'm a tilling ass nonetheless damn it. <laughs> yes. so uh, they, can really, they can tell that your belt is like a knockoff Hermes it's not like a real Hermes I belt. just don't have I'm yeah. not liquid when I travel I don't it's understand it's just an extension cord <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. just got that bunch of shoelace belt. Wait a minute, this guy's wearing a barrel with two straps. I'm a, do you, it's, I'm a do you realize how much Peruvian treasure I have in my pockets right yeah. now? Yeah. I'm have sorry. you even yeah. seen the amount of gold we've seen before? No. What a strange thing to say to a stranger. <laughs> uh, please come in. Uh, you walk inside. Uh, and it's very old. I mean, obviously it's 1920s, but even even for this period, it's old world New York. You think that the decor inside has probably changed very little from the uh, late 1800s. And you see an impressive marble staircase right in the middle of the lobby, like leading up to the floors where everyone lives. Uh, and there's a reception desk with a, uh, a smiling uh, young man. Uh, and he says, uh, uh, good afternoon. Um, how may I be of uh, assistance? Excuse me, would you be so good as to uh, show us to the um, to the rooms of uh, Dr. Mordecai Lemming? Uh, yes, and is, is Dr. Lemming expecting you? People are always asking us that. Um, no, I'm afraid we're, we're breaking in on him rather unannounced. Um, as you can see, I'm, I've just late uh, arrived in your your wonderful building and indeed your wonderful country. I can tell from your accent. Uh, is it French? No, no uh, not um, not as such. I suppose there's an argument to be made that there's some Norman influence, but um, no, I, I have the distinction of being uh, from England, so. Ah, yeah. That was yeah. my second guess. Um, well, uh, I, I apologize. I, I, I can I can call him, but uh, may I may I know what this is concerning? Yeah, if if Vaughn, if you don't mind, certainly. We wanted to uh, return a, a, a book to him that we collectively borrowed. It's called Africa's Dark Sex. All right, um, just a moment. Yes, and... if you can entice him with Africa's Dark Sex, I think that <laughs> he'll give us admittance post haste. All right then, and. It's a very okay. popular title. Mm. Yes, and you can tell he's about to ask how to spell it, and he just doesn't worry. Uh, he calls up and says, you see, he's just waiting, waiting for a ring. Uh, hello, Dr. Lemming. I have uh, four people here. I'm sorry, I didn't get your names. Margo. Margo. Mm. T- uh, Carter Tillinghast, Esquire. Margo, Carter Tillinghast, Esquire, yeah. and... Dr. Elias. Dr. Elias, and and you, sir? Von Villiers. And Von Villiers. Uh, They say they're returning a book to you, Africa's Dark Sex. 
He does not remember ever uh, having that book or lending it to anyone. He's wondering what this is about. Carter turns to the others. He's like, this guy's dimmer than I thought he was going to be. Shit. Do you, oh, he's just, do, do you have a card by any chance? A, a card? Um, yes. Oh, uh, Feyruz takes out a, a card and draws that symbol and hands it to him. Which symbol? The symbol the of the... symbol that we've been seeing. On, on the forehead? Carved on the forehead. And hands that to him. Hands that to the clerk? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, what do you want me to tell him about this? He'll know. <laughs> Can you run up and just sh- show it to him? This is a matter of great importance. Dr. Lemming, I, I, I do apologize. Uh, they, they've handed me a, a, a business card with a hastily drawn uh, symbol. I, this is rather strange. It's, it looks like a, it's like a, perhaps a flower. There's like two parentheses with some dots. Oh, all right then. I'll uh, I'll send them right up. Uh, Doctor Lemming, uh, he is on the fourth floor. You can uh, walk right up the stairs. We are. L- Playing a point and click adventure. I'm sorry. It's just like, it's amazing. It's just like the, oh, that didn't work. Fuck. Oh, wait, we got this thing. Try this. Yeah. Click, 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 click. And then there we go. Totally a little great. hand going yep. around. Yeah. So yeah, Vaughn will, will like, kind of give just a little nod to the to the um, uh, concierge and just like uh, look to the group. And he's like, well, of course. After you, Ms. Elias, doctor. Yeah. And I give a little wink to the gentleman. So you four scallywags walk up. I, I said the fourth floor. It's actually the sixth floor. So it's a sixth floor walk up. You go up the big <sighs> marble staircase. Changes everything. <laughs> Wait, forget it. Forget it. We don't want to go. I'm going to roll for jump. Von, Von Smoker's lungs bail after the fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> Going without me. Uh, you get up. There's a beautiful building. And you get up to the sixth floor. And there is a, a man, a small, balding, pale man, waiting outside the door to uh, uh, an open apartment. Uh, his clothes are just kind of all uh, uh, cattywampus. And he's covered in <gasps> ink and dust, grubby cuffs. He just looks like a, a, an old academic. And he just he looks at you with wide eyes. And he's like, hello, hello, please, please come in. May I see the 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 the, uh, the drawing that you showed the uh, the clerk downstairs? As she like hands him the card. Ah yes yes please please come in come in. And he ushers you in uh, to his uh, apartment. It is opulent, but it's overcrowded with books and papers everywhere. Uh, there's Rococo uh, detailing on the walls and ceilings, just fighting for your attention amongst a sea of books and, and random objects from every continent, uh, all with the shared theme of, of myth and folklore. Um, if you spend even more than a second trying to read the spines of some of these books. And uh, he says, so yeah, I, t- t- tell me, uh, what, what brings you here? And with this, with this, with this symbol, I, I'm very familiar with this symbol. Uh, does this have something to do with the, uh, the latest murder? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, it's been in the paper. I, uh, I, 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 I read the paper every morning, and I saw this, and uh, I was waiting. I was waiting for you to come. I, I assume you're with the. Wait, are you with the police? Who are you? In a manner of speaking, uh, yes, Lieutenant Poole uh, did say we were free to investigate and help him out. Um, but even more so, uh, we were fortunately friends of the deceased. And you were friends. I'm so sorry for your loss. May I ask how you knew Mr. Elias? General adventuring history. Research. You know, you share research. Hmm. Well, who, who can say, really? He like, Colleagues and companions. He giggles, like, kind of nervously and just reaches in his uh, vest and pulls out a little flask and... Uh, 
down Sydney Sligo. Just a little nerve tonic, sorry. Um, whoa, 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 don't be so fast to, to put that away. Let's no, 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 it's fine. It. It's, I need it for my condition. Uh, it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible to hear about another murder, yet another murder. Uh, all these murders, something's not right. Uh, but uh, I, I, all I can tell you is what I told the police. I believe uh, this mark here, uh, I'm, I'm assuming they found it on your friend as well. If they're connecting it to the Hilton's Adams murders is the only thing that they found before. I think this has something to do uh, with an African death cult. Either there's an African death cult here in New York who is committing these murders or there's someone mimicking uh, an African death cult uh, to, to, to stir up ill feelings. Uh, I, I, that's all I know. I, 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 I am very sorry. What can you tell us about this symbol in particular and also about that death cult? Well, I, I just I in my in my study of, of myth and, and folklore, I you know I, I consider myself a man of many tastes, but African folklore has always been the most attractive to me. I find that there is there is much to learn from these primitive cultures if you really dig in, and uh, I I see that it's something I've seen in many of my books before. Uh, it, it is linked to a, a cult that, as far as I knew, is no longer existence, known as the Bloody Tongue. Yes, and uh, of course, Vaughn is like glances over at uh, heroes like that's what we saw in, in our library delving as well. <clears throat> you mentioned something, uh, the Kirk said something about Africa's dark sex and uh, a book. Uh, you know, obviously, you just wanted to to speak with me. I'm I'm intrigued, but uh, I uh, this is a, a very difficult book to track down. Do you have a, a copy of this book in your possession? Why would you mention this? Well, we were hoping you would help us out with that. Yes, a, a, an antiquarian and a bibliophile such as yourself, we thought might have a copy of their own. Um, for we too, uh, looking for that particular volume. Uh, unfortunately, I do not. Uh, as last, uh, I'm, I'm familiar with it, of course. Uh, I will admit that I have looked into it before. I, I didn't have full access to it, um, but uh, I, I read uh, a little bit of it, and I found it rather incomprehensible. And to be completely honest, I didn't like the way that I felt after I read it. Uh, it was just this 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 man who uh, spent some time uh, out there on the dark continent and uh, ran afoul of some uh, cults, uh, as it were, and uh, it really uh, changed his life. Well, ended his life, as it were, but uh, I don't know the... I don't really remember the exact uh, the exact story. I would, uh, as a collector myself, I would kill to, uh, to, to, to get a copy of it. Why, 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 how do we even know about this book? Dr. Lemming, as Feyre's inches closer to an uncomfortable distance, a closeness. In your research, have you come across anything of the supernatural within these cults? You know, a lot of the, the mythology that I study, they, they, mention, uh, they mention magic. They all believe in magic. Uh, do I believe in that? Not so much. But they all, the stories speak of, of magic. Uh, you know, the, the myths go back to a time when, when gods walked the earth. If you believe in that, then you believe in magic as well. Myself, I'm a bit skeptical. Yeah, magic sounds pretty crazy. Carter's going to look, look at everybody else. Mm -hmm. There have been Any stories of accounts? people who have found uh, tomes and books that unlocked great secrets. Maybe I'm uh, getting cynical in my old age, but uh, I just believe that's a lot of hogwash. In all of your uh, uh, copious amount of studying, uh, did you ever come across anybody that you suspected was a, maybe still trying to carry this torch, trying to, you know start a New York chapter of African death cults? I mean, did you ever get any close to anybody that was even sniffing around that? No, yes, no. You were sort of an enthusiast, but have you ever encountered an urban practitioner? No, no, not at all. I And I, I consider myself the foremost expert, uh, maybe not in the world, certainly in New York, um, but uh, until these people started showing up with these symbols on their head, it was the first I'd ever seen this type of uh, anything linked to a cult here in, the, in New York City. Well, what is it you know about the bloody tongue, um, aside from its uh, rather disturbing name? 
I, I think it was linked to, to one of their their gods or, or, or gods from another place that are uh, meant to come here and do harm. You know, see, these, these people, they sometimes they worship the sun, sometimes they worship the wind, but there are some people who uh, maybe they're not right in the head and they worship things that are uh, darker. Maybe uh, they worship gods they think that can come and give them great power so that they can take over the world now. I'm not saying those people don't exist here in America. Those people exist everywhere, both in primitive times and in modern times. But, uh, you know, what that has to do with these poor people dying all over New York City. I don't know. Are people doing it in the name of this this god trying to call uh, him? I don't know. Which, uh, what's, is there a name for this god? You know, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to really dig into it. I, uh, it's, it's not, it's not a, a god that is, is native to Africa, as it were. You know, if, I think all these gods, they have uh, different names, like the Roman gods. Uh, you know, the Roman gods have the same god as the Greek gods, the African gods. They all have the same names. Uh, I, I can't remember. I'd, I'd have to look and see. Uh, Any connection to Peru? To Peru? Uh, no, I mean, there's plenty of uh, cult activity down there as well. You know, Mr. Elias, I, 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 I never knew him, but I, I'm familiar with his work, and, and he wrote a, a book recently about some time he spent in Peru uh, studying uh, one of these uh, cults. Uh, I, just, I read so many books, I can't remember anything about it, but... Uh, We've read it. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I wish I could, I wish I could be of more help. You know, if you're interested in more African, uh, uh, culture and whatnot, there's a great shop I go to. I have a man here in New York. His name is, uh, Silas Nakwane. He's got a shop up in Harlem. Uh, it's great. It, they, you know, anything I need, I always go, uh, to him. He's, it's a little shop. It's not too big. It's got a bunch of African curios. Uh, it's called the Juju House. Um, you know, he, he might be able to help you. Uh, you know, I doubt he's going to have a copy of this book you're looking for, um, but he may know more about uh, about the bloody tongue, or, or or he might even have some fetishes that uh, uh, may may help you in your uh, in your research. Uh, I'm assuming you're you're trying to find out what happened to your friend. Um, but uh, Silas Dequane, uh, he runs a nice shop and, and reasonable prices to boot. Okay. Can I? Can I? I... I don't, can I spot hidden around this, around all this clutter? Hmm. Um, in particular, looking for, I mean, if a copy of this book is here, but also if there's like a, I don't know, like a flannel headband or something that is, that is similarly. Um, or even just scouting the, little, the book titles. Yeah. That yeah. He's what, what else he's got? Yeah, for sure. Great. Yeah, we're we're only uh, a spot hidden. Let me see if he's got like a bong. Oh. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> oh. Hold an 85 over 75. Nailed it. Oh. <laughs> That's the opposite. Can we do a, a collective spot hidden as we're all? Um, well, all you know, all we know is Vaughn is looking around. And it's just like, there's so much going on here. You can't, you can't really hone in on anything, but any of you can roll a spot hidden, sure. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt. I feel like um, Margo's kind of more so watching the guy. And I'd like to roll something on him, like psychology. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. Because um, when he took the swig and seemed sweaty, I feel like that gave her, um, so. who was that guy's name? The, the guy, Larkin? Gave mm-hmm. her Larkin vibes. Yeah. yeah. He did um, have Larkin vibes. You're right. Which guy um, had Larkin vibes? Uh, the uh, one we're talking Lemming. to, Mordecai. Lemming, yeah. Lemming, yeah. Uh, I rolled a 36 under 80, so that is a hard success. Hard success. <laughs> Looking around to see if anything uh, jumps out at you, you yeah, don't. Um, <laughs> Vaughn is meanwhile looking at a at a totem on the wall that he kind of turns over and it just says "Made in China" on the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a paperweight. Hmm. Um. You don't see any red flannel headbands, which is good. Uh, not that he'd probably leave those laying out if he was a member of this cult. Like, oh, sorry, let me just hide Oops. my Tidy death up. headband. How did that get out? Um, just seeing if there is a copy of that book. Certainly nothing jumps out at you and you're like, 
You know, you're used to scanning the stacks at Miskatonic Library, you know, really quickly seeing, uh, quickly discerning what his order is here, if there's any order to the way his books are. You don't see Africa's dark sex. Um, but you do see a, a little book that jumps out at you that says something like, uh, you know, the, uh, something to the effect of like Kenyan cult and its worshippers. Kenyan cults and its worshippers. Dr. Lenning. Yes? Would you mind if I take a little look at that book right over there? Oh, please, yes. Uh, I, I would love for you to look a book. Uh, anything you want to look, just, uh, you know, don't uh, don't take anything. Uh, this is all I have are my books, but please, you're, you're more than welcome. In fact, I, it's very, very rare that I get visitors. We should, uh, I would love to, I would love to know more about uh, things that you're interested in as well. Uh, and he, uh, he Obvious. picks up the phone and he's like, uh, yeah, hey, uh, Thomas, I, I, I have some visitors here. Could you? Uh, this is Dr. Lemming. Could you please send up some cucumber sandwiches and, and lemonades to my apartment? Yes. Yes, I have, I have four guests. They seem very nice. We're going to we're going to sit and chat. I'm just... Yeah, please. Five, cucumber sandwiches and lemonades. All right. Yeah. And Party. he's like, I am working on so many different things these days. I so seldom get to talk about them. And, and you seem like good listeners. And uh, he just starts going on and on mm -hmm. about all the nonsense that he's working on right now. Well, uh, and Mark, you're digging into that book. Is this a rare edition? Oh, no, no. That's this. Uh, what is, which one is that? What do you have there? Uh, as I, Kenyan quotes and it's, uh, I can't read my own handwriting. Practitioners. Oh, right. <laughs> um, all right. So you start going through that quickly. Margo, what are you doing? I guess like while he was talking, just like asking him questions, I want to know like, what, did anything happen in your life that like triggered you to like get into all of this and like roll a psychology? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, roll a psychology. Yeah, hard success. Seventeen under fifty. I Seventeen. Think it's extreme, isn't mm. it? Under no, fifty. I don't think so. You just um, you don't feel like uh, anything anything uh, happened to him you just think he's a uh, a lifelong academic that never really made anything of himself and maybe the second he saw this thing in the news thought maybe this would be his big shot um but even lieutenant pool told you like he really couldn't offer any other information and you feel the same way now as you're questioning him it's like he's just telling you what you already know um as you dig into that book uh Give me a spot hidden. Uh, Feyruz. Oh. For a library use, if that's probably better for you. I rolled a 48 under 80. Perfect. So you do see, uh, as you're scanning through, just looking for something to jump out at you, you see a reference to the bloody tongue. And it appears the bloody tongue is believed by certain Kenyan cults to be an unnatural, primal, an alien avatar embodying rage and callous disregard. They believed it was this enormous monstrosity, nearly 10 times the size of an average human with rending claws and in place of its face, a single long blood red tentacle that stretches upward as if looking for the stars, a single bloody tongue. I would say that um, as Margot is engaging him in conversation, I'm going to try to stealthily take notes on all of this. Okay. Go. Who's got the worst luck here? Ooh. Mine's 36 right now. It's lower than mine. Yeah, lower than mine. Oh. Give lower me a uh, luck roll, Kate. Okay, here we go, you Full guys. Group luck roll. 39. 
Over 36. <laughs> oh, you could spend, can you spend? No, she can't oh, spend, can't spend luck, luck on luck. luck. Can't spend luck, luck on luck. On luck. Uh, Man. So he, while you've uh, distracted him long enough that uh, Feyruz could dig into this book, he just starts droning on and on. And the cucumber sandwiches and lemonade are taking forever to come up. And just when you think you can get a word in edgewise, the door rings and he's like, ah, that must be Johnson. And he goes over and he's like very slowly wheels in a card of cucumber sandwiches and lemonade. He's like, oh, this is so wonderful. Now, I hope everyone uh, likes mayonnaise on their cucumber sandwiches because Johnson always puts mayonnaise on them. And it's just going on forever. And he's like, now what were we talking about? Ah, yes. Egypt and he just goes on and on about it and you realize like you're never gonna get out of here uh, mm. unless you're rude or make some sort of social role to try and pull yourself away right I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to charm <laughs> our way out here we go oh Egypt a beautiful country <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I, if, uh, if that doesn't work, Marco's going to be German and rude. Nice. <laughs> I think we're going to fall back on your secrets. Germanness because I am like, I, I have not rolled like under 80 in the last <laughs> little bit. Um, so I'm trying so to trying to be charming. It's charming. like, hmm. Yes, of course. Well, the sandwich is simply charming, but I'm afraid it might be time for us to dash. Uh, you see, you've been simply overwhelming in your voluminous knowledge. It's hard to simply process it all. Oh, nonsense. I've only, I'm still in North Africa. We've mm. got so much more to talk about. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, we do way. absolutely appreciate your breadth of knowledge, but yes. uh, we do have another appointment yes. that does have to do with our dearly departed... Have I told you about Tanzania? Oh, the time I spent there as a lad. No, we barely made it out of Mali. So, yes. I'm... <laughs> yes, no. Um, do we need more cucumber sandwiches? No, Listen, you old bastard. bastard. We're getting out of here right now. Perhaps a little gin in your life? Jesus <laughs> Christ, enough. <laughs> Carter just stands up like, you've served your purpose. At this point, Feyruz is pocketing the book. <laughs> Well, there's yeah. no re- no reason to be rude, my oh, good man. Oh, jibba jabba, flim flam, with you. Don't Sir. mind my friend; he gets very cranky when I'm he needs to go to bed. This well, is. I, we I, really I, need to take him to bed. You see. I, I don't understand why 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 you would be so rude what, to me. I've been nothing but kind to you. I've got once mentioned your disfigurement. Uh, oh oh oh! <gasps> All right, and no. I could have. I saw I've it the moment you your... walked in, and I didn't say anything. Margo I... was trying to hold you back, and he says that, and she's like, "Nope." <laughs> I have sat here, sir, and listened to your microaggressions you against the home. African people. I how dare you say microaggressions? That they are. I feel as if they are my people. I've studied <laughs> them so much. No. Favors to the hands. Vaughn a cigarette and lights mm-hmm. one up herself. <laughs> I mean, read the room. I gave you cucumber sandwiches. No one likes cucumber sandwiches. They taste like nothing. I, but the, the, there was mayonnaise on them and it enhances the flavor. Mayonnaise is gross. This it's is, eggs. I, I am calling down to the desk. I'm having them, I'm gonna have you thrown out of well, here. Well, guess what? We're leaving. You can't throw out someone who's leaving. No, I'm just gonna throw you out anyways. It's a six story walk up. <laughs> hey, we just walked out. Wouldn't uh, yeah, be the first time we jumped out well, of the window. <laughs> these hooligans are being rude. We're just walking out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you come back. You'll never come back here again. Yeah, it would have off. been nice to have like one encounter where we just really did it. And um, <laughs> no, but it's his own fault. I mean, when I'm sitting there staring at some sort of fucking fertility statue for forty minutes because it's more interesting <laughs> than what this old bat is talking about, then Jesus Christ. <laughs> I did find word on a bloody tongue in this one. And as she holds up the book. Not a total waste, then. Uh, uh, And as we're passing the concert, you're like, cracking jaw on those cucumber sandwiches, uh, Thomas. Uh, Yeah, you guys sucked all the flavor out of them. Good work. Thanks to Mr. Lemming. And uh, you are, they open the doors, and you walk out back onto Park Avenue. You can still hear Dr. Mordecai Lemon cursing from the Just yelling floor. down from the window. Cucumber! <laughs> they were the finest cucumbers Dear in the God. tri-state Those area. were imported from Israel. <laughs> um, what do you want to do now? Sleep off till the uh, 
Will reading? So yeah, it's yeah. I think so we so. were with him for hours. So it's <laughs> midnight now, probably. Yeah, that failed luck roll. You were there for. Uh, it was. Pr- it's pretty late now. <laughs> I like that the failed my luck goodness. roll just led to a day of boredom. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I, I feel like that was my fault. I just kept him going on and on and on. And yes, why I did you keep anything. engaging him in conversation? As I soon was as just like trying came... to see if he was also a zombie like Larkin. He just he looked a little bit sweaty and was no. drinking and being just weird. You know, he's being very weird. So not everyone now, is it's possessed. Not fault. You yeah. don't know that. It... No, I, I, I agree with you. I, I was saying that it's not Margot's fault here. That man would have joned on about anything. Oh, I'm going to have to shake that off with more alcohol. <laughs> as and long so, as it doesn't have cucumbers in it. Yes. You head back to the Waldorf Astoria and order a, uh, some bootleg cucumber gin. Uh, to have a nice little party in, your, in Vaughn's hotel room. Mm-hmm. And you wake up the next day um, with the goal of heading to Harlem. Uh, Ramsey's office is on 124th Street and Lennox Avenue. Um, you know, one of the cool things about playing Call of Cthulhu is they give you a lot of information about the the times and and whatnot and what it was like there and so there's a whole section on harlem uh that i think would be interesting now that we're actually going into harlem 1920s harlem is obviously different from today's harlem and stop me if you don't find this all interesting i actually think it's interesting it kind of sets the tone mm-hmm. for uh you know what you're what you're walking into here when you go to visit colin ramsey uh in in the early days of new york harlem was predominantly a white affluent neighborhood but um when european immigrants like italians and jewish refugees started rolling in at the 19th in the end of the 19th century all of the the white affluent people like left and those immigrants in turn would migrate um when new york's various black communities started moving in and then a lot of newcomers uh coming in from the great migration when black immigrants from the british caribbean colonies came to new york and a growing number of latin americans came in after world war one to settle in the area uh, that is now known as Spanish Harlem. So uh, during the 1920s, Harlem is populated by African Americans, predominantly in Central and West Harlem, and then there's Irish, Italian, Jewish, and Latino uh, communities in East Harlem. A lot of police, police, police brutality. Um, the more things change, <laughs> uh, and there was a lot of uh, racial tension as all these different racial groups were being switched in and out, um, and that was further fueled by the return of African American soldiers coming back home from the war, seeking housing, work, and recognition of their civil rights following the time they spent in the Great War. So there's a lot of gangs, and the gangs, there were African-American gangs uh, that were forming across the city to protect their neighborhoods from the police and from, uh, you know, uh, rabble-rousers, Irish rabble-rousers. Um, but a lot of the tension in Harlem at the time was police versus ethnicities. So you're, you're this is kind of setting the tone for what you're walking into as you head up to Carlton Ramsey's office. You're getting looks left and right uh, as you walk up there because... You're, you're, you look different. And so you get there and, uh, he's got a small office with, uh, that his niece works in. There's like a small desk up front that she's sitting at. And you met her at the funeral as well. Uh, Willa uh, is her name, I believe. And, uh, his desk is in the back of the office. It's a pretty cramped office. Papers everywhere. Um, you knock on the door and he uh, he greets you and he's like please please come in come in come in um have a seat and he uh, already has chairs set up around his desk um he's he's uh, trying to compose himself a little bit he says uh, it's, it's been a hectic uh, a few days obviously for all of us um uh, thank you for for coming. I, I imagine that this is uh, not how you expected your time in in New York would go. Uh, I, I, I I fancy myself a professional uh, in in what I do, but uh, I will admit I uh, I'm 
I'm shook by this as well, and so uh, I apologize in advance if I, uh, I seem uh, unprofessional at all. It's not my intention. Uh, he was a he was a dear friend, and and the world has truly lost uh, a great man. The world is worse for it, and and just the way the way it all went down. Uh, well, I don't have to tell you, so I, I, I hope you're I hope you're okay, and it's very kind of you to come. I uh, I know he would have wanted you to be here, and I I know that for sure. And so uh, I know it's early in the morning, and this may seem a bit unprofessional, but uh, and he just walks over to a cupboard and uh, pulls out like a bottle of brown liquid. Uh, he's like, if ever an occasion called for a little. Uh, bootleg bourbon now is the time Iris uh, pulls out her own glass from like a bag that she it's got the Waldorf <laughs> Astoria it says Waldorf Astoria on the side <laughs> a couple of Waldorf towels fall out <laughs> bunch of soaps and plastic bags uh, steady on you Bron <laughs> holding them blind uh, and for anyone that wants it he pours and he's like you know uh, I, I, I can't tell you how many times Jackson and I would polish off a bottle of this stuff just talking and I mean I talk and he's the one doing all the talking I'm just listening listening to his stories I think he was just using me as a sounding board for stuff that he would write but uh, I'm gonna miss those times to Jackson to Jackson to Jackson to Jackson clinks he drinks about half of it puts it down maybe fills it up and then pushes it to the side um so, Elias was a, uh, a wise man, prescient, if you will, uh, and he came to me the day before he died and updated his will. The day uh, before, you say? The day before, yeah. Now, I, I, I know what you're thinking, and, and, and he, he, he didn't say anything explicitly, but I believe he, uh, he was in fear for his life and wanted to make sure his affairs were in order should the worst happen. He was too smart. He was too smart for his own good. But he was also on to something that he cared deeply about and uh, perhaps too deeply. And that's why we're all here today. But uh, yeah, it was the day before he died. He updated the will. So I'm going to go through it right now All right. and uh, and he just starts reading the will and the important points uh, are pretty much uh, I'll give you the bullet points of what he's saying he says uh, Elias has given me uh, full power of attorney and uh, gave me complete authority to liquidate his assets I've been instructed to use these assets to create and manage a fund uh, Jackson requested that any friends of his, four of you, who attend this reading, uh, make use of these funds to continue his investigation. Um, his investigation into the Carlisle expedition. Specifically for the car, like we can't just maybe take a chunk out to... No. buy a car. We could all fit in with maybe like a machine gun. No, unless it's... Side. Unless it's pertinent to the investigation, okay. his his goal was to have you uh, use this uh, money in the event that something happened to him to further his investigation. He believes uh, that he was on to something earth-shattering and named the four of you as the only people that would be ever be able to finish his research. So we can't take the money out to maybe start a restaurant, maybe like a themed restaurant where people come and when it's their birthday. No, we no, got sparkler. No. Okay, okay. No, in fact, check. I, I just want to make sure. I'm going to hold on to the money and I'll make disbursements uh, from this fund to pay okay. for travel, accommodation, living costs, any equipment purchases you may need, legal bills. Hopefully not, but you may. But run we into can't that. shoot a movie starring us. 
no. about going. No. Okay. All right. No. I think we're clear here, sir. No. Medical expenses, not movies. Um, whatever you need to further his research. And if you have to pay anything out of pocket, uh, obviously not uh, taking in a, a, a picture, just hold on to your receipts. Bring them to me in a timely fashion. I'll also remain a, a point of contact for you uh, should you choose to uh, further his investigation, further his work. Um, you know, if your research ever takes you in separate directions and you need uh, someone to uh, uh, contact one of your friends, uh, I can be that person. Uh, I, I accept that role. It's the least I can do for my friend. I can also coordinate any communications between you and other people you may be trying to get in touch with. Uh, I'm essentially part of your group, as it were, should you choose to uh, accept this. Um, Would you happen to be in possession of any journals or anything that he'd been working on recently? Well, he left me a note um, to be read to you uh, in the event of his death. Um, that's as, as good as anything. Um, so let's read that. Yeah. And I'll direct you to roll 20, um, where I will, uh, search far and wide for this one handout out of handout 300. Handout number 4,222. <laughs> uh, here it is. It is a, a handwritten letter from Jackson Elias. Uh, it says, Greetings from Beyond the Grave. By now you know that I've all... By now you know that all I've really left you is a whole heap of trouble. If I were still around to have a, an opinion on the matter, I would understand if you decided to walk away from it all. Hell, if I'm dead right now, that's a good indication I should have done the same. But you know me too well, and I know you too well. If you were the kind of person who always did the sensible thing, we wouldn't be such good friends. You've been there when I needed you in the past, and I hope you will be again, even if it's too late to save me. I've been pulling threads all over the world, and while most of them are still unraveling, I think I'm on to something big. Carlton and Jonah can fill in more of the details for you. I've left some of my papers and notes with them, which should help you work out which hornet's nests you need to poke next. I trust you to bring my killers to justice. Of course, I'm assuming I was murdered. It would be just plain embarrassing if I was run over by a trolley car. Follow my investigation to its bloody end and seek out the truth. I'm not asking you to finish my book. None of you can even write worth a damn. What the fuck? <laughs> Your friend always, Jackson. Now that's, God, it's not very nurturing, man. Carter's shook by the, the jab at the end. Yes, that seems uh, particularly pointed. Didn't, didn't you send him your manuscript? <laughs> I didn't send him the manuscript. I, I gave him a soft pitch, mm. but but maybe my z syntax was off or the maybe grammar wasn't. Maybe he didn't get to reading it, uh, and he never knew how great you are. Thank you. There's, Thanks, a, there's a postscript. Oh. It says Carlton. Or Carter. <laughs> That's me. Car <laughs> Carlton. Carlton, or whatever your name was. Your book was perfect. For I had a wobbly table. What? And it was no longer wobbly. <sighs> that son of a bitch. When I put it under it. All right. That's fine, Jackson. You asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Carlton says, I've read this note now maybe a dozen, two dozen times. It's just wild to me that he knew and if he knew then there's other people that knew as well he got caught up as he said in some hornet's nest and he got stung so if this is something you're going to do you have to understand that you're going to be at risk as well and I don't mean this to scare you I don't want you to not do this 
But just understand, if it could happen to Elias, it could happen to you. Yeah, we understand all too well, I think. Jonah has some things from him. He actually has more, I don't know, things that might help you directly with this investigation because Elias came to him right when he got back to New York um, for his untimely passing. So you should definitely make a point uh, to see uh, Jonah over at Prospero House. Um, I trust him implicitly. But uh, Jackson did leave um, something with me. I've stared at it now, and I have no idea what it means. Uh, he just shows you a like blurry, grainy photograph. Um, let me see if I can find it. Ah, there we go. He handed this to me and told me to keep it safe and to give it to you as well. I don't know. Maybe this is something that will be important later. Just looking at this photo in the back, like the buildings in the background, do I recognize where this is? We're all like, a, what do you have, geography? Or what is a skill that you have? Uh, who knows, you know, let's... <laughs> well, something uh, apropos. Uh, let's see. Uh, you may not have it, but somebody else may have. I don't know if there's geography or there's something. There's uh, navigation, but I don't think that's... There's history, but I do not, I'm not yeah. good at that. Anybody good at history? No. Hmm. No. I mean, five. I feel like regardless of if we're good at it, we're all look, looking at the boat and like the first three letters that we see, H-A-R, mm -hmm. and like looking at the buildings and like trying to find pe like familiarity. Um, yeah, there's like a large steam yacht or maybe diesel powered yacht um, beyond some like junk boats. Yeah. And then, yeah, you see those three mm -hmm. letters. Um, D-A-R. D A R, and then the dim background is a building with a large tower. Yeah, the tower has a clock, and then there's another building that looks kind of like the dome, like the Capitol building. Yeah. In the oh, US. Yeah. Um, and he also gave me um, this here, and, and again, I, I don't know what the point of this was, and when I asked him about it, he, he just shook his head and said, uh, they'll. they'll They'll figure it out. And uh, it is a fucking flyer for <laughs> an event that is already passed. Scroll. Cult of Darkness. Um, Polynesia. Give that a, a read, Roth. Uh, tonight only the Cult of Darkness in Polynesia, the Southwest Pacific. The two-hour lecture with slides delivered by Professor Anthony Cowles, PhD, University of Sydney, Australia, presenting Loxley Fellow of Polynesian Esoterica at Miskatonic University. <gasps> Skylar Hall, New York University. Tonight only. This tonight, of, I assume, being last night. Yes, this has already passed. And you oh see God. this, Feyruz, and you've heard of this professor. Uh, he's a visiting professor from Australia who is uh, on like a grant at Miskatonic and uh, he must have come here to do this lecture at NYU. Oh, yes, of course. You but, are. I recognize this professor. Nobody could understand a damn word he ever said. Hmm. Oh, another one of those? Australians, you know. Oh, huh. yes. Ent Entipodian. Yes. They're always like, can I get a flat white? A flat white? Yes. Yes, and everything always sounds like it's a question. <laughs> I'm sorry, I want to hear Margot 
I want to see her German accent do go, an Australian. What do you do like they do? A flat, a flit white? Yes, yes. <laughs> wow. It's, it's the way they say flat. Flit. Yes. Flit. Yes. flit. Yes, that's right. I, no, I, I'm not good at. Oh no. I, I rather I enjoy. <laughs> I'd rather enjoy your uh, uh, Sydney by way of Frankfurt um, pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Indeed, these Antipodians are the only people I know who can insert four to five syllables in the word no. Well, no. Vaughn, I mean, you're kind of, yeah. you're the reason they are who they are, right? You just all sent all your prisoners to the like island. One, yes, all I suppose we're the reason like one they one are how we are, and you are how you are. Hmm. Well, at least we fought you. Well, whatever, we don't have to do it now. Carlton just shakes his head, and he's like, I, I think he just... This is probably how he wanted to go. Well, not the way Where? he went, but I think he just, he loved tempting fate. He loved these mysteries. He loved unraveling them. He had to know that it was going to catch up with him at one time or another. Even leaving these things with me, I don't think he wishes you any harm. Certainly not. But uh, just be careful. You can't be reckless. Oh, don't worry, sir. Shan't be reckless at all. Nope. Uh, says uh, says Vaughn, uh, wincing as the bruise on his back from jumping out a window yesterday. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it is in our nature him. to try to try mm-hmm. to not be reckless. Just thinking of a of a sing sing CEO just fucking berating him for mm-hmm. <laughs> to sneak into the You know us. <laughs> Favor is just remembering acts. Carter urinating all over a desk and chair. We are the very <laughs> definition of responsible investigation. <laughs> we have to Jackson's work is in good hands. Don't go mouthing off to any cops and peeing on desks. That's or jumping out of windows, heard this <laughs> as the saying goes. Before we leave, can I try to r- roll a history on that photograph? Yeah. yeah. Um, just to see. Do it. Do it. Why not? Before. Nope, definitely don't know. The, the make of those boats, I mean... All this time, my mind has been occupied by thoughts of Kenya. Now suddenly we've got this photograph that looks as though it was shot somewhere outside of Hong Kong and a mm-hmm. flyer from a gentleman who's an expert on on Polynesia. Yeah. Where, in, where in the world is this taking us? I'm very excited to find out. And I just want to check with you, sir, one more time. If we want to take the money to, say, start a hot sauce company, Maybe create an empire. People looking for delicious yet spicy additions to their meal. We that's we can't touch that money. Jackson said you were a uh, a charmer, a hot ticket. Huh? Um, you're not gonna get any of the money. God damn. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> we'll that's call fine. it Tapatio. We'll yes, let your exactly. friend. We'll let your friends mm-hmm. handle the money. Even if we named it after him, like Elias Jalula. No, 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 that no. that would not okay. be... No. You, Too complicated. Or, Franks, easy. Give me that bourbon hmm. back, Mr. Mr. Oh, Tilling. All right, you've earned it. Perhaps we could do some R&D with my acquaintance, Texas Peter. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I, I, am, I am yours. Um, you don't have to give me an answer or anything. Uh, this was his wish for you to, to further his investigation. And uh, I am here at your disposal. Uh, he has a considerable uh, amount of money. Uh, he came into even more money after he spent some time uh, with you all uh, in Peru. Uh, oh, I didn't really get any of that money that he got, that's fine. The point is, there is a considerable sum, but it is not unlimited. However, I am yours if you need me to make phone calls for you if you need me to to do anything i i want to help as well thank you very much mr ramsey we'll lean on your professionalism and good graces we are up to the challenge yes and perhaps this halton and jonah would be our next visit and so The will reading is over. Is it your intention to still go to Prospero House? We have a packed itinerary here. Yeah. All right, so you're up in Harlem, and now you want to head over to Prospero House, which is, I believe, 
um, Lexington Avenue near 35th Street. So we've got a bit of a hike. Um, but you get down there, and if you were to look into Prospero House or ask the concierge at all about it, um, you know that it's a rather modest concern that does not aim for bestsellers, but rather for books that deserve to be published because they will interest select readers for generations to come. And you're like, that's my boy, Jackson Elias. Um, you get there and uh, it's a, there's probably like maybe 10, 20 desks that you can see. Uh, maybe half of them are full and some small offices off to the side. Uh, you speak to a receptionist and she's like, ah, Mr. Kensington is expecting you. You bring him back and you see uh, Jonah again. Again, I said he's about 48 and uh, seemed like a nice guy all very New York uh, and he's the owner and editor-in-chief so he's got the biggest office there and he sees you he's like please please come in come in come in uh, pff, uh, have a seat how, how 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 are you doing how did you did you are you coming from the will reading yeah yeah how did no that hot go? sauce company in the future apparently it's fine I, yes, him. Don't know what you're talking about. What? Uh, what, I. What, what, what? Do you feel comfortable sharing with me what uh, what went on there? Not a great deal to share, really. Only that um, we, it seems, have been entrusted with um, with carrying on uh, Mr. Elias's great work. And um, there is some dispute as to whether the funds we've been offered to do that are to be used for the work at hand or as a <clears throat> seed capital. Right, right. Well, you know, I, he he really liked you guys, and uh, he, he's been doing this stuff for a long time, and I don't think he ever came across people like you that uh, really helped him in his, in his, his, his investigations and in his research. Obviously, uh, what happened in Peru, like I said at the funeral, really uh, changed the trajectory of his life, and, and sadly that, that trajectory ended in the hotel room the other night. But I know that, that you were very important to him and and Carlton didn't tell me anything about the will, but uh, you know, I, I kind of could infer that uh, you were an important part of kind of keeping his legacy alive. The reason I wanted to speak with you is, uh, are you familiar with these other murders, uh, with, with, with Hilton Adams and whatnot? Not just that they have occurred. Yeah, not, not too much. Well, this, this connection to the Adams murders is a bit too convenient, if you ask me. Um, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. Uh, you know, from what I gather, even the police uh, think that this is all to do with some sort of cult. Uh, whether it's a cult here in New York City or a cult elsewhere, uh, it's, 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 it's cult. It's cult related, and and you know as well as I that Elias was infatuated with these blood cults. So I'm thinking a, one of a couple things happened. Maybe one of his old enemies from one of his one of his travels caught up with him. Either that, or or whatever he was working on right now was even more dangerous and important than Elias himself had believed. Perhaps he got in deeper than he was supposed to, and. Uh, someone had to silence him. I don't know, but, and he gets up and he like closes the door and he brings his chair around the desk. So he's sitting with all of you. He's like, you see, Elias was convinced that one of these blood cults massacred the Carlisle expedition. But he also believed that not all the principles of the expedition had been killed like they reported in the papers. Um, he pushes a button on his desk. Margaret, can you bring me in the uh, correspondence with uh, Mr. Elias? Thank you, Margaret. And uh, a little steno comes in, gives him a, a file. He watches her walk out. He digs into the folder, folder and he's like, here, I want you to look at this letter he sent me from uh, Nairobi last August. Nairobi, you know, is where the uh, remains of the Carlisle expedition were found. They were there taking an unexpected 
safari. Um, and he shows you uh, this letter right here. Who wants to give this a read? It's a little tricky to read. It's August 8th, 1924 from Nairobi. Rob, you want to try that? Yeah, man, they really commit to the handwritten. They really right? do. Right? Mm -hmm. I haven't yeah, read something tough. like this in this style in a long time. All right. Yeah, yeah. cursive. Uh, <laughs> August 8th, 1924, Nairobi. It's last Dear August. Jonah, big news. There is a possibility that not all of the members of the Carlisle expedition died. I have a lead, though the authorities here deny the cult angle. The good God. Natives. Natives, thank you. I was going <laughs> the matinees. The natives <laughs> uh, sing a different tune. You wouldn't believe the stories. Some juicy notes coming your way. This one may make us all rich. Blood and kisses, Jay. So Jackson Aww. believed that members of the Carlisle expedition were killed by these blood cults, but some of them were still alive and he managed to dig up evidence contradicting the testimony admitted during the inquest and trial that was held in Kenya. He's like, all right, this, there's a lot here uh, in these notes, but they're very important. Um, look at this. And he pulls out this just massive Whoa. list of notes. Um, Let's just go around the horn here and read these uh, the kind of um, crib notes for here. Set one of the Nairobi notes sets forth the offices, officials, and tribes which Elias visited while he was in Nairobi, searching for material concerning cults and cult rituals. Elias mentions Roger Corridan, the colonial undersecretary under for internal affairs. However, he notes that nothing conclusive was learned. Elias discounts the official version of the Carlisle massacre. Uh, Kate, you want to do set two? Set two describes his trip to the massacre site. He notes particularly that the earth there was completely barren and that all the tribes of the region avoid the place. Sounds familiar. Uh, saying that it was cursed by the god of the black wind, whose home was the nearby mountaintop. Nora? Set three is an interview with a John Stone Kenyatta, who says that the Carlisle murders may have been performed by the outfit of the bloody tongue. Oh, the cult of the bloody tongue. Why did I say outfit? Um, an outfit, an see? All <laughs> is an outfit. Uh, he says that the cult is reputedly based in the mountains and that its high priestess is part of the, mount, uh, part of the mountain of the black wind. Elias is uh, politely skeptical, but Kenyatta insists upon the point. Uh, in quotes, Elias records that regional tribes fear and hate the bloody tongue that tribal magic is of no protection against the cult, and that the cult's god is not of Africa. Ross? Set 4 follows up on the Kenyatta interview. Elias confirms from several good sources that the bloody tongue exists, though he finds no first-hand evidence of it. Tales include children stolen for sacrifice and creatures with great wings that are said to come down from the mountain of the Black Wind to carry people off. The cult worships a god unknown to folklorists, one fitting no traditional African pattern. Elias lists Sam Marija, railway station. Neville German, Dr. Sir Starrett, Lieutenant Selkirk, and Colonel Endicott are people he questioned. Rob? Set five is a single sheet reminding Elias that the Cairo-based portion of the Carlisle itinerary must be examined carefully. He believes that the reason which prompted Carlisle's Kenyan side trip, is on the Nile. Set six is a long interview with Lieutenant Mark Selkirk, leader of the men who actually found the remains of the Carlisle expedition. Importantly, Selkirk says that the bodies were remarkably undecayed for the length of time which they lay in the open. Quote, almost as if decay itself wouldn't come near the place. Secondly, the victims had been torn apart as if by animals, though what sorts of animals would pull apart bodies so systematically, he could not guess. Quote, 
unimaginable, inexplicable. Selkirk agrees that the Nandis, like the Nandi tribesmen that were blamed, uh, found guilty and hanged, that the Nandis may have had something to do with the episode, but suspects that the charges against the ringleaders were trumped up. Quote, it wouldn't be the first time, he says cynically. Finally, Selkirk confirms that no Caucasians were found among the dead. Only the corpses of the Kenyan bearers were scattered across the barren plain, despite what was claimed at the inquest. Kate? Set seven is another single sheet Elias ran into Niles Nelson at the Victoria Bar in Nairobi. Nelson had been a mercenary for the Italians on the Somali-Abyssian border and had escaped to Kenya after double-crossing his employers. Nelson claimed to have seen Jack Brady alive in Hong Kong less than two years before Elias was in Kenya and long after the Kenyan court declared that Brady and the rest of the expedition were dead. Brady was friendly, though guarded and taciturn. Don't know what that means. Nelson didn't press the conversation. This report only strengthened Elias' belief that the principal members of the exhibition might still be alive. Remember, Jack Brady was Carlisle's right-hand man that went along uh, from New York uh, as part of the original expedition. And then, Nora, you want to finish this out? Yeah, supposedly killed along with all of them. Set 8 discusses a possible structure for the Carlisle book, but is mostly featureless which with entries like tell what happened and explain why. There's a lot here, obviously. Um, I can't make heads or tails of it, really. This isn't my area of expertise. Uh, I'm a publisher. I'm not an uh, artist, I'm certainly not an investigator. Uh, but I, I knew it would be important to you. Anyways, he went to Nairobi. That was in August. The next I heard from him, he sent me a wire from Hong Kong uh, to say that his inquiries were proceeding nicely. So now he's in Hong Kong. And after that, I didn't hear from Elias until probably the middle of last month. It was right before uh, Christmas, actually almost exactly a month to the day, uh, December 16th, 1924. He sent me a wire from London this time. His telegram was very excited and frankly a bit crazy sounding. Uh, he said he'd been in London for a few days where he dug up uh, a lot of stuff that he'd seen unbelievable things and mentioned a conspiracy of monstrous worldwide proportions. He said, uh, what did he say? He said there was a timetable and that he needed to find the missing pieces he also mentioned needing to go to Australia, but uh, wouldn't or couldn't uh, explain more. That wire ended saying that uh, he would see me in New York soon. And so the next morning he left London uh, on a boat to New York, the uh, follow rope. And at this point, Ramsey's looking through the folder and uh, he, uh, not Ramsey, uh, Kensington's looking through the folder and he pulls out a piece of paper and he starts to read it and you can tell he reads something that like gives him pause and he says um, yeah, so anyways uh, it's just a lot he, uh, he arrived in New York uh, uh, a couple days ago uh, he, he came and saw me and he, uh, he left me a couple business cards which uh, uh, he told me to, to hand hold on to them and uh, you know so I want to give those to you as well and uh, you know and some notes and stuff and he's, he's just kind of like closing up the folder do, do you need to attend to something? Uh... no 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 it's just uh I don't know. He uh, he seems a little agitated by whatever that piece of paper was. He's like, I just feel bad. I can t I can tell that. Um, and you know, Jackson was always uh, a guy that got wrapped up in his work. Always a guy that really hmm. he, he gave it his all, and that's why uh, I loved I loved publishing his books. I, was I completely a fan. understand. M might I see those papers? 
and indicating the folder that he just put that piece of paper into. And he puts his hand on it. He's like, well, what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, something about this particular investigation seemed to have uh, really uh, affected him in a strange way. And uh, these these last few notes that he, uh, that he sent me were so... Uh, bewildering and uh, fragmentary that at the time I just uh, concluded that either my dear friend had gone over the edge and needed six months in a sanitarium uh, or else that he so little trusted anyone uh, that he'd hidden all the important data in his head so that it would be undetectable. The- um, Miss, Miss, Mr. Kensington. Yes. There was a time in one of our previous expeditions that our uh, I felt as though I was at the end of my tether. And at that moment it was Mr. Elias who held me in a comforting embrace and brought me back from the precipice. If there's anyone who could be trusted to look into what he wrote at this trying time of his, I assure you it is myself. Yeah. Yeah, no, I... I believe you. My concern is I just... I don't want this to reflect poorly on our friend. He... He did not judge me. Uh, not to... We, we, we should not judge the, uh, the splinters in others' eyes while we neglect the planks in our own, and I myself am in possession of a great many planks, and so I, I shall not judge our d- departed friend by whatever he wrote. We also just frankly n- need to know any th- anything he, he wrote down to help us. Yes, I mean, and, and, and knowing what we know about the sorts of expeditions that he indulged in, it may not be as irrational as it may at first seem. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when we're dealing with cults and gods. Yes. Okay, well, just remember. We want to remember Jackson for the good times, right? And that this hopefully will lead to some good, even though, well, you just read for yourself. And he pulls out this piece of paper and and hands it to you, Vaughn. And you see the following. And if you look at it, it's almost unreadable. And it's like... Um, uh, what's what I want to say like uh, it's it's all fragmentary and like not even complete sentences it's a little all over the place clearly his handwriting is different it's like a very shaky hand um, but when you get to the, the, the final note this is what it looks like and if you're having trouble reading it which you probably will um, just scan down to the bottom here and it's been translated I know oh oh wow this whole time (laughs) yeah um oh I see oh yes many many names many forms but all the same and toward one end need help too big too ghastly these dreams dreams like Carlyle's check that psychoanalyst's files all of them survive they'll open the gate why? So the power and danger is real. They... Many threads beginning, the books are in Carlisle's safe. Coming for me. Will the ocean protect? Oh, no quitters now. Must tell and make readers believe. Should I scream for them? Let's scream together. And we'll see you in three weeks. <sighs> Okay, then. Poor That's Jax. ACDC song lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Make him scream! <laughs> <laughs>